Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Win the Hour, Win the Day. I am your host, Chris Ward, and I have Maria Platuzic in the house. Maria is a branding strategist, and Maria's going to talk to us today about rebranding. But listen, that sounds, I think, more of a transformation thing and less of a tactical thing. But you know me, I'm all about get your next win quickly, get your next win now. So hear me out because we're going to dive into some really practical stuff that I'm sure we've all experienced. I know I have when it comes to, hmm, do I need to rebrand? And oh, by the way, it's not nearly as heavy or complicated as we're making it all sound. Welcome to the show, Maria. Thank you, Chris. Thanks so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So, all right, we talk about rebranding. That always sounds heavy and oh, Coca-Cola and, you know, costly and all this other stuff. And when is the time? So let's get down to it. You know, no nonsense. Tell me when you think is, you know, when you should sort of hmm, really think about, do I need to rebrand? And understanding that rebranding is not as daunting as it sounds. Absolutely. Yes. So, Overall, uh, for my branding clients, the main feeling that we kind of determine is that you're try- when you're trying to get to that next level um, and you feel like something is holding you back or keeping you stuck to getting onto that new, new level or that new platform, um, that's kind of that overall feeling that you have. But I know that there's three, three main signs that I've kind of narrowed it down to. There's a lot of tells and a lot of signs, but these are the most common ones that I know my clients okay. go through. Um, okay. and I list those for you as well. Okay, let's go. All right. So the first item is, and it's one of these items that most of my clients um, don't like to admit to, but they are embarrassed to showcase their brand. They're currently not proud to share their website or their social media pages with potential customers for their feel their branding is either visually unprofessional or it appears dated or simply doesn't light them up anymore. Um, And it's one of those things that it's when you appear not um, completely present or all in, it definitely shows up in your, in your business for sure. Okay. So that's like, okay, I have a meeting. I'm all excited. Things are going along. Yay. Right. I'm feeling the connection and this looks like a potential client. And then you say something like, you know, that sounds really great. I wanted to get more information for my team or what have you. Uh, What's your website? And then, oh, I get a little deflated. I'm a little like feel like, you know, I'm going to show you my tattered shoes or something. And so if we have anything less than big enthusiasm, then we know that's, that's a tell that's a sign. Correct. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You want to appear all in super excited, ready to showcase proudly your brand and your website and and everything else that you can present to the potential client without hesitation. Agreed fully. That makes sense. Cause when I was writing my book, when they are, when the day, and it's all about, you know, how to create your win team and all these other things that people productivity, whatever. And when I was writing it, you know, you're writing this book that you don't know, even if your mother's going to read, right? Like that you're putting, you know, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. And then when it came time for the cover, you know, there's different price points for that. And, you know, there's a joke now that I've written a book that you, you hear when, you know, from authors, like, you know, anyone that said you never judge a book by its cover, never tried to sell a book. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I paid for a higher end cover. I really, and there's this whole, you know, covers for Kindle are different than in the bookstores, the different, like there's this whole niche thing about covers. And I spent, you know, uh, the top, not top, top dollar, but I, you know, I was, I was in the higher end of this, how much I'm going to spend on my cover, which again, was such an investment when no one's read the book yet. But now I stand so proudly and people commented all the time and they're like, oh, that book looks interesting and judging a book by its cover. And, and I'm really proud of it where I've seen other authors that, you know, I'm sure, even though I get a lot of praise for how tactical my book is, how easy to learn, how easy it is to read, but I'm sure there's a lot of great books out there. And there's people where they're, they're not as proud as, as showing it off, right? So yeah. then they, they lose out on that traffic. And it really does, you know, the book's been out like two years now, really does make a difference when I put my shoulders back and get all excited. It's like, yeah, see this? It, it looks professional. It looks everything I wanted. I wanted you to have a feeling when you touched it. And I still stand by that. So it, it really does... Um, Uh, create an energy and a momentum and a confidence. And so what you're saying is when you lack any bit of that confidence or there's any kind of hesitancy, that's when we know you need to upgrade the brand. 
correct? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. For sure. For certain. Um, and yeah, and that's one of the main signs and that's kind of the one we start with because that's the most common one. Um, and then the, the next sign is that, um, you know, something that actually continues to happen for a lot of my clients, but they didn't realize why. Um, and it's that you're not attracting your ideal audience, like the audience that you want to work with or a new audience audience, a new ideal client avatar, ICA. Um, you know you need to ensure everything is in alignment to attract the right people, but you're finding it hard to isolate or rectify this ongoing problem. So when you create a post or list an item for sale, the wrong people are paying attention. And that happens for a reason. That happens because there's a misalignment via the visuals that you're putting out there and the messaging that you're presenting to that audience. So for example, if you are a florist who originally worked with you know, budget brides and budget couples, but now you want to be serving the high-end luxury weddings or corporate mm. events, your messaging and visuals do not reflect that at all. And that's a big tell that you should pay attention to. So you're trying to take your current branding efforts and bring them to that higher luxury level, mm -hmm. but realize that your brand cannot support you at that level any further. So that's the okay. So now I, I, my mind is going to give you a little pushback as a marketing strategist and say, you know, a lot of that could be your messaging as well. But as I argued with myself while you're speaking, I was listening and arguing with myself. Mm -hmm. um, as I argued with myself, I was realizing, yeah, but visuals really are the things that stop the scroll, right? Yeah. So as much as I, you know, messaging is a, is a lot and the title hook really matters and all that stuff, but the visuals really do stop the scroll. So what you're saying is, okay, you started out doing one thing and you may still be doing the same product or service and all that stuff, but now you're attracting a different level uh, of potential potential client or a different level of experience or a different price point. And so you want to make sure that you're upgrading your, your, your brands and your visuals to go with that. Correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. You want to okay make sure perfect. That that's in alignment for sure. Okay. All right. Two for two. We've all experienced that. What's another one that we should be concerned with? So this one is, um, you know, something that I think we've all experienced in recent times, but the original product or service that you were selling has changed over time. Okay. So if the product or service has pivoted and you don't offer that same service or product from when you first opened shop. So like, for example, you offered one-to-one -one coaching, but now you only offer group coaching or masterminds. Mm. Okay. Then once again, the messaging and visuals of the overall brand will not reflect that pivot and that change that you, you're actually taking right now. And this can cause a lot of, you know, issues for your business if you don't take care of it. So it's one of those other things that we've witnessed in recent times that we've all pivoted, but you think that that brand that you originally created will support you in this new pivot when they're not even created for the same reason anymore, right? So that's kind of where you're left with, okay, I know that something is out of alignment. What do I need to do to take care of this, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Like I know for us, when we do, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching, but our group coaching is like one to three people, right? Mm -hmm. That, cause there's some power in learning there, but I, I don't know if I'd call it a group, it's a mini group or whatever. So when we're dealing with those clients, as far as helping them create their win team, their what is next team and our whole backbone is stopping entrepreneurs from working so hard. When we're doing that, and those clients usually have been in business at least five years, their service-based industry and all that stuff. And they've got some experience. We don't work with new entrepreneurs in that capacity. However, we are now starting a, you know, what we call a winner's circle masterclass. And it is going to be a full-on group. Um, and it's going to be, you know, you're going to have hot seat and Q&A. We're going to show you behind the scenes and how to hire and onboard and all this amazing stuff. And mm -hmm. it's a much lower price point. Yes. But for those, it might be, yeah, you could be new in business and, you know, and be on board with that. We will work with you in that capacity. So that's very interesting. So I want to be really purposeful as I put that message out over here, you know, I'm only working with entrepreneurs that have been in business at least five years over here. Yes, you can come and play and, uh, and nothing against anyone who's new to the entrepreneurial journey. It's just our services were geared to somebody with more experience previously. Yeah. Uh, so you want to be mindful of the separation or the evolution, you know, the evolution or the options of your brand. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, it's one of those things when I develop or create a brand, 
um, all of my brands will always have like these key indicators that go underneath it. You can call it your tagline, highlight words, whatever you want to call it. But um, it's one of those things that just gives you that distinction and lets people know exactly who you are, who you serve, and what you do in that short minimal time frame that we have. And a lot of times you might have been labeled, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is that your, your, your audience is. So a Dubsado specialist, for example, but now you're working with, you know, something completely different, your title will change, right? So that's mm. something to pay attention to. And then the original logo and colors and established, you know, all those things come into play when you're developing a new brand or rebranding and you want to pay attention to where you're at and where you want to be and where you want to go. So when we talk about rebranding, that always can sound like, oh, I'm so busy doing so many other things. Like I need one more thing. I'm trying to keep up as it is. Now I need to go back and sort of redecorate the whole house. But really, can it be like adding a, you know, a new chair to a room or like, or, a, you know, a, a new top to an outfit or something like that? Like it's, it doesn't have to be this insane overhaul. Am I correct? So the difference between that one would, I would determine or call a brand refresh so okay. that's kind of like adding a new layer of paint to, to the furniture, okay. or, you know, adding a new outfit. The rebrand is actually repositioning the foundational pieces. So it's taking okay. a deeper dive into your ideal clients, so your ICA, because that might be different now. It's taking a deeper dive into your- So hold on one sec. ICA yeah. is, just so everybody out there understands, ICA is? Ideal client avatar. So those, okay. you know, the target audience that you want to work with moving okay. forward, right? Okay. Um, then it's taking a deeper dive into your, you know, the overall brand strategy things, so like building okay. that foundation via the brand strategy, checking out your competition, but not your competition right now, the future competition of where you aspire to be. Um, and it's the messaging. So what is it now that you are the specialist or the expert at? Because if you have pivoted via the audience or via the service or product you're offering, what do you want to be known for? And when I, when I say messaging, it's like, when, such, when should someone drop your name down on an in search of posts, right? Like when should they call you out and your business out? And what do you want to be known for? So it's really fine tuning that brand strategy first off, and then making sure the visuals are supporting that plan. Um, and the main item that you should pay attention to is your future goals. So where do you foresee your business you know, two years from now, five years from now, even 10 years from now, if you can think that far, where do you see this business going? And then everything you create should be on path and on target to hit those future goals. Okay. So, so first of all, yes. I'm going to give you a little pushback. Heaven knows where we'll all be in 10 years. You think, you know, you have no idea what the entrepreneur world <laughs> yeah. and all that's happening. That's just, you might as well say, what, well, where will I be in 50 years? But I think too, for me, I know when you know, I wrote my book, When They Are, When the Day. And one of the things I really wanted is people get so, uh, the clients that I work you know, with, they're, they're, they get a lot done in a day, but yet they're still working too many hours, five, six, seven years in. And, and they thought that would be very different than when they started. Like when they started, they're all about the grind, which I believe is a big fat lie. That's fine. You're working against yourself. That's another story <laughs> for another day. But I wanted my book cover to be like if you look at it closely, there's this uh, softness of yellow that lights up in the middle of it. It's like a new day, a new hope. And I really wanted to not be like uh, this heaviness of, you know, even associated with productivity in any way, because it just gets cumbersome and calendars and it's boring, right? Like it, mm -hmm. it's like clock accounting. And so I wanted to be hopeful and refreshing. And I was very purposeful about that. And it really paid off for me. But one of the mistakes I often see people, because as a marketing strategist, it flirts with branding a lot as well. And one of the mistakes I see people is looking to their competition and think, oh, I want to be like that company and they're doing really well or they're who I want to emulate and they use a lot of red. So I'm going to really do that. And you don't realize it. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Sometimes people do it subconsciously. Sometimes they do it deliberately. And they're like, you, you, that's, you know, that can't be you. You have to find what makes you different and that's your selling feature. But I've seen that over and over again where entrepreneurs will say, oh, well, I was checking out the competition and it's not like copying. They're just inspired by it. And they think like, I don't know if everybody, all the lawyers go to court and they wear blue jackets, maybe I shouldn't wear a red one. That's, I see, I see their logic, but I find it works against them. 
Um, and I agree with that. Um, and that's why we check out your competition. So I'm actually on the opposing end as well, where it's, you don't want to blend in. Blending in is not an option. So one of the powerful things that I do is I like to scope out the competition because I want you to fit into that category. You want to belong and feel like you belong in this category, but you don't want to blend in that you just get overlooked and mesh in with everyone else. And to just give a quick little um, example of that, I had a property management company from the East Coast and they were looking for a logo icon and they wanted a house icon. How cliche. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. When I did a Google search in their geographic area, a populated 15 house icons. So I did a screen grab and I sent it to them. And I said, this is yeah. why you're not getting a house icon for your logo. Because I yeah. want you to fit here, but I don't want you to blend in. So indirectly, I gave them a lighthouse. They're on the East Coast and lighthouse is a beacon, a guide, a protector, all of these wonderful things. And they're the only ones that have a lighthouse. So when you scroll, they fit in the category, but they also stand out. So that's the key with checking competition out. And I like to flip that script too. It's just, you know, you can be inspired by, you don't have to feel like you have to like, you know, become the same as everyone else. You can definitely be your own unique person and your own brand. And when you base it off core values, and, I, and this is one that I kind of dive in, brand values, core values with them. When you base your brand off that, um, it does not falter over time because those are things that you kind of keep with you kind of forever. So that's one of the main things that we build brands off of as well. Yeah, you're right. Because, you know, life is a journey of getting to know yourself. That's one thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then somehow I know I thought, well, that's different in business because I thought I really knew who I was in business because I always, you know, my first job, I always did really well. I was a very hard worker. I was all these things, you know, and so then you don't understand really how your identity impacts your work. Like, Again, I showed up in the beginning years and I'd have, you know, I, whatever I was doing, business meetings, I showed up in business jackets that I didn't like wearing that weren't my style. I felt very restricted in them. They didn't, but I just thought that was my, my professional uniform. I wanted to look, look, mom, I'm all grown up. And, you know, I showed up in a meeting and they were wearing jacket and it, it, you know, it just wasn't at all how I would express myself, you know, with, I wouldn't use the word fashion because I like to wear sports clothes a lot. So fashion might be an overused word for me, but I can see now how I presented even myself in my business following suit, pun intended. So yeah. it's really easy to do that. Then when you have all these visuals coming at you online and your slate is blank or needs a refresh and you're like, so you don't even realize how influenced you are by what you see. So really just trying to, to be who you are and express that through your work, you know, is really the key. Absolutely, yes. We want to we want to capture your essence. We want to capture your USP, your unique selling proposition. What is um, what makes you magical and your process and whatever it is that you do, and we want to bring that to the forefront for everyone to see. So that's essentially what your branding does. It brings your strengths and brings them to the forefront and just really highlights your expertise but keeps it simplified so that just everything makes sense and feels in alignment with your path to get to your future goals. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, Maria, we've got a couple minutes left. What would, you know, what's one other thing you just don't want to leave today without sort of pointing that out to us. So we're really aware on this. Yeah. So the main message here is, so if you're experiencing any of these signs, um, you should definitely pay attention to them. And definitely it sounds like a heart attack warning. If you're experiencing any of these signs, <laughs> please call a, a professional right away. Now, in this case, it's not a medical professional, but please call a professional right away. Okay. If you're experiencing any of these signs, okay. Continue. Maria. If we're experiencing any of these signs, yes. Um, definitely seek help of an expert um, okay because seek help of an expert. Yeah, I got it. Uh, Get your this, blood. this is the flow we're going with. I'm going to go okay. with it because you don't want to flatline your business, right? You want to keep going right. okay. you want to succeed. You want to, you know, basically pump back life into it and you want it to invigorate you once again and being empowered and invigorated and lit up once again and standing a hundred percent behind your brand. That's what rebranding does. It just gives you that confidence boost and it gives you that you know, piece, that extra piece, but also gives you that, you know, focus and clarity that you need moving forward. So you don't have to veer right or left. You stay on your path and it just becomes so much easier for you to reach your future goal. So I definitely invite you to 
pay attention to these branding signs of when it's time to rebrand and um, take action on them for sure. All right. So for your business health and vitality, we've got Dr. Maria in the house. So, <laughs> all right. So we'll take your brand pulse before the hour's up. All right, Maria, where can people reach out and find you? Absolutely. So my website is quick and easy. It's platusicdesign.com, P-L-A-T-U-S-I-C design.com. Um, you can sign up for my freebies on the site. I also offer free brand strategy calls for anyone that wants a little more direct one-on-one -on -one approach where I can take a deeper dive into your current business and your current efforts and see what's holding you back. Um, on Instagram, you can follow me at Platusic Design as well. I share all the behind the scenes and I give my all in content on there as well. All right. Thank you so much. And everyone else, until the next episode, we will see you then. Thank you so much.